Carl Alfalfa Switzer was the most popular star of the classic Our Gang comedies. He had an uncontrollable cowlick and an irrepressible personality that captured the hearts of many. Alfalfa's appearance in the Our Gang series made him the most popular star, and his images conquered the imagination of audiences worldwide. His unforgettable character has become a part of film history, bringing joy to millions. However, Alfalfa's untimely death has been shrouded in Hollywood Babylon myth, clouding the facts of his passing. Despite this, his story remains packed with adventures and difficulties, which he faced with bravery and resilience. Carl Dean Switzer was born on August 8, 1927, in Paris, Illinois, to George and Gladys Switzer. Carl had an older brother, Harold Frederick Switzer, who would also join him in the film industry later on. Growing up, the Switzer brothers became quite the sensation, singing at auctions and various functions near their parents' farm. Their talent and charisma did not go unnoticed, and they soon caught the attention of the film industry. During a visit to their grandparents in California, Carl and Harold decided to try their luck at auditioning for the popular Our Gang series produced by Hal Roach. However, getting onto the studio grounds without a pass proved to be a challenge. Undeterred, the two boys stood outside the commissary amidst a midday lunch crowd and started singing. The commotion caught the attention of Hal Roach. He instantly saw the potential in two young boys and secured them for the current Our Gang comedy. The 1935 short film was aptly titled Beginner's Luck, and it marked the beginning of the boys' journey in the film industry. But it was the nickname Alfalfa that ultimately stuck, becoming a household name for audiences worldwide. Within a few weeks of joining the gang, Alfalfa established himself as a formidable talent, combining his personality and talent to create a dynamic on-screen persona. Alfalfa's unique talent for handling dialogue was combined with his penchant for singing, giving a new meaning to every song he sang. His country roots influenced his first appearances in our gang films, but he soon took on a different persona as a slick, wisecracking kid. With his signature three-piece suit, necktie, and fedora hat, Alfalfa's image became iconic, charming audiences with his wit and charm. As Alfalfa's career progressed, so did his singing style. He began to stray away from his hillbilly country boy roots and embraced the unlikely role of a crooner. This decision was ironic and comically brilliant because Alfalfa's unpredictably squeaky voice transformed romantic ballads into comedy romps, leaving audiences in stitches. Alfalfa's career was marked by his appearances in 61-hour gang comedies from 1935 through 1940. His unforgettable character, with his comic antics with Spanky, romantic entanglements with Darla, rivalry with Butch, and love affair with the movie-going public, had a significant impact on film history. The images of Alfalfa's performances are indelible, and his screen image in the Our Gang films cemented his immortality. As Alfalfa grew older, his voice and appearance changed, which eventually led to his departure from the Our Gang series. His final appearance was in a short film called Kitty Cure in 1940, marking the end of an era for his beloved character. Despite his desire to continue acting, Alfalfa faced the reality of typecasting. People still saw him as the irrepressible youngster who sang with a squeaky voice and had a cow lick that wouldn't stay down. This perception made it challenging for him to find work as an adult, which was a source of great frustration for him. Alfalfa continued to work in Hollywood, but he struggled to find roles that would allow him to shed his child star image. He landed bit parts in movies like State of the Union and Pat and Mike, both of which starred Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn, and My Favorite Blonde with Bob Hope. He also starred in a series of films centered around the Gas House Kids, which reunited him with his fellow Our Gang castmate, Tommy Butch Bond. Alfalfa even made a brief appearance in the 1946 holiday classic, It's a Wonderful Life. Despite his efforts, Alfalfa was never able to escape the shadow of his Our Gang character. He was stuck in a frustrating cycle of being perceived as a perpetual teenager, unable to transition into adult roles. This must have been a disappointment not just for Alfalfa, but for his fellow child performers as well, who faced the same challenge of growing up in the public eye. 
To make ends meet, Alfalfa took on odd jobs, such as tending bar and serving as a hunting and fishing guide in Northern California. It was a far cry from his Hollywood days, but he did what he had to do to make a living. Unfortunately, the 1950s brought tragedy to Alfalfa's life. He got married, but the marriage didn't last. His wife remarried and kept their son's true paternity a secret from him, adding another layer of heartbreak to Alfalfa's life. As January 1958 rolled around, Alfalfa Switzer was going about his business as usual. However, one day, as he was getting into his car in front of a bar in Studio City, he was shot. The bullet came through the window and hit him in the upper right arm. Despite an investigation, the perpetrator was never caught. Later that year, in December, Switzer ran afoul of the law again. This time, he was arrested in Sequoia National Forest for cutting down 15 pine trees that he had planned to sell illegally as Christmas trees. As a result of his actions, he was sentenced to one year of probation and was also ordered to pay a fine of $225. Switzer had found himself in a precarious financial situation. He owed $50 to a man named Stiltz who claimed that Switzer had lost his dog. Switzer, unable to pay the debt, launched a search for the animal, offering a reward to anyone who could find it. The search was successful, and the dog was returned to Switzer. The person who found the dog received a reward of $35 in cash and $15 in alcoholic beverages. Switzer was relieved to have his dog back, but was unhappy about the loss of the $50. In a conversation with his friend Jack Pyatt, a unit still photographer, Switzer decided that Stilts should reimburse him the finder's fee. Switzer and Pyatt argue that since the dog belonged to Stilts, it was his responsibility to pay the reward. As the sun began to set on a fateful day, Carl Alfalfa Switzer and his friend Jack Pyatt arrived at the home of Kenneth Butch Stilts in Mission Hills. Switzer and Pitt had a plan. They intended to demand money from Stilts. The details of what happened next are disputed, but all accounts agree that Switzer struck Stilts over the left side of his head with a glass clock. In response, Stilts retreated to his room to retrieve a 38 caliber revolver, which Switzer wrestled him for. During the struggle, the gun went off and nearly hit Tom Corrigan, Stilts' 14-year-old stepson. As Stilts recounted the events of that night, he claimed that Switzer had knocked on his door and threatened to break it down if he didn't let him in. A struggle ensued, and one of the men hit Stilts with a clock. In response, Stilts retrieved his firearm, but Switzer wrestled him for it, causing the gun to accidentally discharge and nearly shoot Corrigan, Stilts' stepson. Stilts testified that Switzer then pulled out a knife and threatened to kill him, to which Stilts responded by firing his gun and hitting Switzer in the groin. The bullet damaged an artery, leading to severe internal bleeding, and Switzer died before reaching the hospital. While differing accounts of the incident exist, Stilts maintained that he acted in self-defense. As fans, we choose to remember the joy and laughter that Carl Alfalfa Switzer brought into our lives. We fondly recall the hilarious antics and misadventures of the gang, led by the wacky and lovable Alfalfa. Goodbye, and rest in peace, little rascals Carl Alfalfa Switzer. <laughs>